Hey, what's up, y'all? Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me today. I'm really excited about this training. It's um, it's a really cool way that I have brought together some of my professional resilience training and doctrine and, and, and the book work, and I've combined it with real-world applications. And I've, I've found a way to kind of mesh those together to create something that I think is, is extremely valuable uh, for you. It, it, it's something that is at least worth a shot um, because it's something that I've actually been doing for some time now. And, and when I do this consistently, I see my life start to change in a way that, that's pretty profound. And it's, it's all through small little actions that, that kind of kick our day off. Now, this video and this, um, the, the lessons and principles that I'm going to be discussing all fall in line with, with the same purpose that undergirds everything that I do. And that is, I believe with all of my being that with inside each one of us lies a spark, right? And, and you know you know that this exists. You may have never heard it expressed like this, but you know that this is true because we've all had those days where we, we get out of bed and we're firing on all cylinders and, and we just feel like nothing can stop us. Like the sun is shining brighter and everything is just flowing more smoothly. You go into the office or wherever it is that you work, the shop, whatever it may be. And, and you're, the way that just the, the manner in which that you're communicating with people is different. Different sometimes to the point where people will outwardly acknowledge the difference in what they're seeing, right? And so, so that you might hear expressions like, oh my God, you're like glowing right now. Like, dude, what is up? You're on fire. Like, notice the similarities in these uh, expressions. You're glowing. You're on fire. That's what kind of drew me to, to, to referencing this state of being, the state of mind as your spark, right? Because that spark, when you get close to that spark, you light up, you glow, you're on fire, you're getting it, you're crushing it, you're firing on all cylinders, right? It's it's these consistent these consistent analogies that we use to to express the power that you have right now and the, the energy and the momentum. And so my my spark and my pursuit of my spark is actually best sought out and best pursued when I am assisting and helping other people walk and get to their spark and find their way back to it. And it's, I know that we've all experienced this feeling. I know that we've all had this at least one or two times in our life. And, and so it's not a question of, whether the spark exists or not. And you can call it whatever you want. You can call it flow. You can call it, you know, whatever it is that you like. I, I'm going to call it spark. That's that's what makes sense to me. It's what clicked in my mind. And, and, and it's not a matter of if we can get to it or if it exists. It's a matter of when we get to it, when we get close to that feeling and, and, we're, and we're firing on all cylinders, how do we turn this into something that's that's repeatable? How do we regenerate this energetic feeling consistently in a way where where we're performing at that higher level more days than we're not? And, and where it starts to become a natural state of being in a, in a more natural place for us to get to. So I think that that is really why I wanted to start this kind of series, the, the Spark training series, if you will, uh, with the very first thing that, that you experience every day. And that is, that is your morning, right? And so I feel like if we can really set our patterns right in the morning, if we can, we can look at what we're doing in the morning time, and we can adjust that or tweak it or you know just manage it a little bit differently injecting things that we want and removing some things that maybe don't serve us so well um, we can do this and we can really kind of grease the skids we can we can move the remove the the barriers in the way between us and that spark in a way where 
we could kind of get back and close to that spark. We could start to light up every single day. And so we're entering into the day with that momentum, with that spark energy. And that and that that can change the bounds of, of our relationships. It can change the rules under which we operate, the way that people see us, the way that we interact. The the limits are almost endless. And I know that it sounds a little a little far out there, maybe a little far fetched, but once you experience this on a kind of a consistent basis, you start to see the relationships around you start to change. And when we think about our lives, it's it's kind of a, a series of relationships, isn't it? Where, you know, we have our relationship with maybe, you know, with your spouse and if you have children with your kids and even your animals. And this is all before you leave your home in the morning. And then you get to work and you have your relationships with, with all of the people at work. And, and, and this isn't just you with your boss or you and your employees or subordinates and leaders and, and what have you. This is, this is relationships with people that you just communicate with at the water cooler, you know, um, and during lunch, the people that you go out to eat with, friends. Um, all of these relationships are impacted by the way that we feel. And if we can change the way that we feel, we can change our perspective going into these relationships every day. We'll see these relationships start to turn and start to morph into, into something that is beyond anything that you can imagine right now. So if you're interested, stay tuned because we're going to dive in right now. Let me paint a little picture for you and you can tell me if this sounds at all familiar. You wake up in the morning, probably upon the second or third snooze, and you grab your phone to see some work messages and emails that came in overnight with all of today's fires that need your attending. Now you see some news articles of how the world is ending and those are only followed up by posts from friends who seem to always be on these incredible vacations, right? Now you finally peel yourself out of bed because you know if you delay any longer, you're probably going to be sprinting out of the door by the time it's ready to go so you can actually try to make it to work on time today. Um, but when you get up, you what do you do, right? You end up like flipping on the news or putting on a podcast uh, to make sure that you're spun up on current events so you have your two cents in order for when it's time for your daily meeting at the water cooler. Now... You got to make sure that you have that podcast on because, you know, even while you're showering, you cannot deny yourself that external stimuli pouring into your brain. Then you finally get out and you're ready to go and you're dodging the children and the animals and the spouses and all to, to get out of the door so you can hopefully make it to work on time. But don't worry, after you get out the door, before it slams shut behind you, you holler, love ya, in the requisite fashion that we do every day. So let's pause here for a second, shall we? Let's take a second to uh, to take a closer look at this fairly standard modern American morning. We're starting our day off with almost zero self-control and, and about no discipline. And you, you've set up a time to get up and you blew that off two or three times, which is sure to get you out of bed zooming, probably not in the way that you'd like. But then you don't even get out of bed. You further delay the day by grabbing your phone to see nothing but fires and stress that need to be put out. At work, at home, in the extended family, in the world. But fear not. The one positive input that you're getting is that amazing vacation that your friends are always on. And that just fill you with those great feelings of envy and discontent. Oh, I wish I could be on vacation. But I can't. I had to go to work. I got all these fires that I need to put out. Now, you're out of bed, and your mind is spinning around all of those fires and all the stresses, but don't worry, you're going to take your mind off it by flipping on the news, which does nothing but further flush away any thoughts or feelings or emotions that actually serve you. But hey, you've got your two cents that you can fill the people in at work, and you can let them know how you really feel. But then it's time to rush out the door. Avoiding the people that you say that you care about the most because they're in the way. And hey, you're running late. But it's all good because you, you drop the requisite, I love you, when you're outside and the door is slamming shut behind you. But now you're geared up and you are ready for the morning commute. Yes, 
and we wonder why everyone acts crazed and manic when they're on the road swerving and cutting each other off. All right, I acknowledge this might be a Washington DCism, and I also acknowledge that I haven't had to deal with this in some time. So, uh, working from home it does have its benefits, but maybe this applies to you where you live as well. And now, after all of that, after you finish the commute, you walk into work, and everyone's there. Their heads are buried down in their computers or their phones. Nobody wants to talk unless it's about the morning coffee and crutch that they, they have to fulfill. Then you go and sit down and your day begins. Man, what a way to kick things off, am I right? So let me ask you this. Does this sound even like remotely familiar? Does it sound like something that you may have seen or played out before? Does it sound like a morning that's primed to facilitate the best version of you? I mean, think about your productivity at work. Think about your relationships with the people on your team. And now realize that the interactions that we have with those people at work directly impact us. They impact our feelings, our moods, and then our actions. All that we're carrying with us when we go back home to our family. Now this is starting your morning off in the passenger seat of the car that is your life. You're allowing external events and stimuli to grab a hold of the wheel and to make the determination of where you're going to go while you just sit back and go with the flow. Let me suggest a different way. A new way. Your new morning. Let's start from the beginning. Let's start with the, set, with the setup, which is naturally step zero. Yes, there is a step zero. Because this step actually is required to happen before you dive into your new morning. Okay? So, and this is, like I said, this is going to be all about the setup. Now, this is probably the longest and the most important and in-depth step. Because just like when you're starting any project or like you know think about cutting wood just like when you're gonna start cutting wood what do you do how do you do that you measure twice and you cut once all right so what's the very first thing that you need to do one you need to set your alarm right and this is this sounds trivial right but i want to i want to make the trivial kind of matter and I don't want to leave things to be taken for granted, right? So you need to set your alarm. And, and the reason that this gets its own clearly defined kind of sub-step uh, here, we'll call this A. And this is going to be set your alarm. And so there's, a, there's going to be a theme here that's kind of like this idea of, of ownership, right? I want you to take ownership over your life and we're doing that one step at a time one baby step one quarter step one crawl <laughs> at a time and the first inch of that crawl is actually setting your alarm and now the ownership part of this is that this is your alarm this is nobody else's alarm this isn't your wife's alarm this isn't your kid's alarm you can set alarms for them you can set different alarms for them i don't care if you set an alarm two minutes after that alarm that is for them but you need to make an alarm that is yours. This is you and your alarm. And the reason that this matters is because this is the first kind of contract that you're making with yourself. The night before, you are saying to future you, like you are signing the contract, you are saying, I am going to get up at this time. So why is this, why is this really relevant? It's relevant because you want to, one, discipline and enables you to, to, to feel more confident. Discipline enables confidence. Because if you're able to, to follow through on things that you, you promise, then you are more confident in being able to follow through on other things that you promise. And so, so starting with promises to yourself start you out with those boats of confidence. It's also, so a lot of people say this and they actually get it mixed up. This is, a, this will be a later step. 
Um, a lot of people say the first victory of the day should be like making your bed, right? You should you make your bed and then you have something that's nice and clean and neat and ordinate, you know, in your room. Uh, and it's and it's a victory and it's right off the bat. You get out of bed and boom, sheets tight, everything looks beautiful, it's great. And I'm not I'm not here to argue with that idea. Uh, I'm here to promote that, but I'm here to say that that's not the first victory. The first victory is following through on your word and showing the discipline that's required to get up when you set your alarm. It's yours. Own it. Now, I acknowledge that life happens, right? And so you're not always going to be kind of following through on these things. There are going to be mornings where it's tougher than others. So how do we build our our morning? How do we change things in in a way that facilitates actually being able to follow through on this? Because that's that's what a lot of people miss in these types of of informational videos and when people are trying to get people motivated and psyched about their day or whatever is that they want to say, get up when your alarm goes off. It shows discipline. You're going to go crush the day after that. Like, yeah, sure, cool. How? Because it's not like I haven't had an alarm before. And it's not It's not like I don't want to get up when my alarm goes off. The desire is there, right? The the, the knowledge that, that I am not going to be worse off, that there's not a part of me that's going to... I'm never, ever going to wake up and be like, man... Sure wish I didn't get up when my alarm went off. That really, that was just a bad call. Poor decision making. Never again. That's never going to happen. You're never going to have that experience. So why don't we do it, right? It's, we want to delay like, oh, I'm just, I'm not motivated. I don't want to get up. So there's actually, there's a number of ways that, that matter with this. But I'm going to go with one that's less eso, less esoteric and more practical and tangible, right? So where's your alarm right now? Like, how do you start your alarm? Is it on your phone? One, I I would recommend if possible to, to get an actual alarm clock that's not your phone. But it's fine if you if you don't want to do that, if you don't have one, that's okay. Use your phone. But what you need to do is you need to start the habit that every night you're gonna set the alarm. Instead of setting one that is that is routine, that's like, oh yeah, every day during the week, I'm gonna get up at this time. Every single night when you go to bed, I want you to set an alarm. And when, as a part of that process, as a part of the alarm setting process, I want you to take your phone with the charger if necessary, walk to the other side of the room, plug your phone in. I don't care if it goes on the floor. I don't care if it goes on the windowsill. Like, it doesn't really matter. But turn off all of your, your notification sounds and all that jazz and just leave it so just the alarm is going to go off. And so then you walk away. <laughs> and then you finish your bedtime routine, go to bed, go to sleep. Then, when your alarm goes off, guess what you got to do? You got to get your happy butt up and walk over to your phone to turn it off. Now, this is no guarantee because I know some of you are real stubborn, stubborn, hard-headed individuals. And you may get up, go grab your phone, turn it off, and go back into bed. But those are all additional choices that you have to make. Like, in that, you are what you're doing is you're not foolproofing your morning in your alarm system. What you're doing is you're bolstering it up. You're you're creating a little bit of security. Um, if you're already up and out of bed, then you gotta go lay down. Like, hopefully, the idea here is you get enough energy, you kind of get the blood moving a little bit, you gotta go over there and, and shoot. Maybe you're a little angry, and that's okay. But like, you're angry, like, oh, I'm up, but... This is what I wanted to do. It creates pause for a second where you have to get up and you have to get to your phone and you have to turn it off and then you'd have to walk all the way back to bed and then get into bed. And so the the idea is somewhere in there, you're going to remember the reason why you put your phone on the other side of the room and you're going to be able to latch onto that motivation. That's kind of where we get maybe like a little bit more esoteric, right? And so... This goes into the next part of the step, what I want you to do. And that is focusing on your why, focusing on your purpose. And so I want you to think back about the very beginning part of this this video, very first part about this training. I gave you my clear, unadulterated purpose and why. And if, you, if you've watched any of my other recent videos, you're going to hear that same message echoed. And it's 
it's one, a sense of consistency, but it's a sense of consistency rooted in who I really am. And how I got there wasn't accidental. It wasn't through circumstance. It, it wasn't random. It was it was created by spending a little bit of time with myself and, and living about 30 minutes in introspect and in, in introspective action and taking that on. And so I want you to just write down and I, and I really, I really, really, really want you to write this down. You could even, you could type it. That's fine too. But I want you to go through the process where you actually, you actually put the words to paper or put it to text or, you know, whatever the case may be. But I want you to write down why you are getting up at that time. So we got a, we forgot our B. Our B is phone or alarm location, right? So that's all about location. We're moving it, we're separating, we're creating a space. They even have these cool alarms <laughs> that, uh, that are like little airplanes. Um, or like helicopter wheels. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, the the little grip handle things with like the pull, the rip cord on it, and you pull it, and the little circle prop on top spins off into the air and it kind of goes around. They actually have those for uh, alarm clocks. It goes, it sits on the base of the alarm clock, and when your alarm goes off, this thing zips up into the air and goes across uh, the room. And the only way that you can turn the alarm off is by getting up finding that prop and bringing it over and setting it back onto the alarm clock. So I, you can do this cause it's fun. And if you, if you're down to like to, to bring some zest and enthusiasm and, and silliness into your morning, that's not a bad way to do it. Um, a little bit money investment. Um, I'm not sure how much they are, but, uh, the other problem with that is, is if, if you're really, uh, if you got some ingenuity, you're going to end up unplugging the alarm from the wall if it's right there next to you. But it would be interesting if you combine tactics, right? You take that alarm, you put it on the other side of the room, so it gets up. So you got to get up, you got to go find it, and you got to walk to a part that's not right next to your bed. And so you're at least then you're not even walking back. So you have all of this movement and action and frustration and <laughs> hilarity to start your day off. Uh, now, if you're if you're married, this is probably a conversation that you want to have with your significant other before you go on uh, adding airplanes to your room because you know you never want to prop hitting somebody in the face. <laughs> that would be very much my luck. But they also have these really cool ones. I actually just got one. Um, they have these diffuser slash light producing device slash speaker um, that can all be incorporated into like your internet and Wi-Fi now where you could set an alarm and say, I want my humidifier thing to start going off at a certain time. And so like the lights start to come on and the oils start to diffuse if you like like you know you want to produce some some smells that are like nice and fresh uh, to kind of help wake you up um, and then it could start playing music the one that I got actually didn't end up having a speaker and I'm a little that was like half the reason that I got it <laughs> but I digress they have these they have these other things so if you want to if you want to like really ease in your morning and create a kind of a blissful and peaceful start to it rather than the the chaotic, like, holy crap, where's the propeller? I gotta go find it. Um, you could do that. There's options. There's so many different tools and mechanisms that you can use to facilitate this process, to facilitate step zero, right? And and all in the setup. And it's and so this is this is the work. Like I said, this is like the longest, the most in-depth kind of step because we want to measure twice and cut once. And so now the, we'll, we'll get back on track, right? So C we have um, we have our why, right? We're getting into your, again, your purpose. Because this, again, this is all about you, man. This is all about you. Uh, and so it's really important to identify what your purpose is, right? Not the purpose that you think you should have or the purpose that if you're saying it to somebody else that you think that they would find respectable. Um, but it's like, what's true for you? And so... Maybe you and, and maybe a lot of people out there haven't really spent a lot of time in this type of introspection, in this type of uh, uh, thought process where you really consider like the bare bones why. And, and, and so maybe this is new for you. And so I want, I want to kind of provide you with 
the pro the same process that I used to discover what that purpose was that I told you from at the beginning of the video, I want to give you the same process that I used. And, and admittedly, I didn't come up with this. I watched, I learned about this from somebody that had it regurgitated from somebody that it was told to them and somebody that was told to them. So I don't know where this actually began. And honestly, I don't really care. The bottom line is that it works. And so I am, I am a, a proponent of using the things that work because th at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're looking for the ability to get things done, right? And so I don't want you to write to go to work, right? That's, you don't, you don't live to work. You don't work to breathe, you know? Uh, I want you to go seven layers deep. And yeah, I know I'm asking a lot and 75% and of you, I'm sure literally just quit right now, even without even knowing what that means. So I want you to ask why seven times to generate unique answers that are true for you each time. So let me run you through an example. Why are you waking up in the morning? To get ready to go to work. Two, why are you getting ready for work? Well, I have to earn money to pay my bills. Why do you have bills to pay? No, here you can like kind of pick your largest. Oh, because I, you know, I, 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 I need a place to live. Like, well, why did you select this home? What's well, important for me to, to have a home that's in a safe location and it's nice and has running facilities for my family? Well, why do you want your family to feel safe? Well, it's my job to provide a safe environment for them so that they can play and grow and make mistakes without fear of undue harm coming their way. Why is it your job to provide this type of environment? Well, I'm the leader of my household and, and I'm the protector and and I'm responsible for their well-being. Why do you need to be the leader? Why do you need to be responsible? Well, that's what I promise to be to my spouse, to my kids. I want to show them an example of a, of a strong and steady head of the household because then they'll be able to pursue their own dreams and with, with more vigor and better enabled, you know, without having to worry about are they going to be able to come home to a safe place? They know what a good model of responsibility looks like. And, and they can become value added to society. Because the last thing that I want is to be a drag on society. Or to produce drags on society. Boom. There it is. Now it can take a bit of work. And, and you can see that at the end I went into uh, answer mode so... For this kind of uh, example, it, it actually took what might have been like a 10 whys, you know, but yours might take four. You might already be operating on like your third level why, but didn't even realize that there was a deeper connection to your core values, to, you know, what undergirds the decisions that we make, the reason why you get up, your purpose. Now, it's important to determine why you're doing what you're doing. So that when it comes time to actually do what you need to do, you're simply completing the actions that beget the type of person that you see yourself as being. Or the type of person that you want to become. Now, your why statement can look something like this. I'm waking up tomorrow to lead my family by example. I will add value to my family's lives. And I will add value to those that I'm collaborating with today. I am responsible for both safeguarding and being a shining example of what this of what is possible and and this is the first step in how I do that. Now this is far more powerful than getting up tomorrow to go to work. If you don't see yourself as the head of your household whose job it is to secure the safety of your family, then your answers may be different. And that's fine. Now you may go to work because you love the work that you do and, and the money is just a byproduct. Um, of, of, of that pursuit of your passions, you know, and that's really the goal. And this this is completely acceptable, and there's very much the rea that reality for many people. Um, but the answers are truly your own, and, and understanding what they are and why they are will provide you with a deeper level of motivation to take that first step. Now, remember, we're on step zero. So I want, I don't want you guys to lose motivation, but I want you, I feel like 
having the understanding of your why and your purpose really drives you to take step one and step two and, and follow through on this action plan. Because if we don't have a clear understanding of why it is that we're doing this, we're going to lose motivation. When things get hard, we're going to quit. And we're not going to have that kind of safety net, that, that trampoline to bounce back off of to go and pursue the things that we want to pursue. You're not here because you're, you're satisfied with the status quo. You're here because you know that you are capable of something better. And so this is the part of that, that while it seems kind of mundane and and maybe like you don't want to spend that quality time with yourself, it's crucial. It is, it is critical. It's the most important part. If you don't undergird the rest of these actions with your purpose, with your why statement, then you're going to have a very hard time following through when the waters start to get choppy. And we did it. We're on to step one. <laughs> well done. Uh, and this is wake up. And I know that sounds absurdly simple, but that's kind of the point. It's simple, but no one said it was going to be easy. Now, you might be saying to yourself, this is easy. I do it every day. So let's just skip to step two. But hold on. Bear with me a second. Just pump the brakes and let me tell you what is going on here. How are you waking up? Over the past week, how many times have you hit the snooze button? Is it every day, multiple times a day? If Friday's rolling around and you've, you're up to racking up to like 15, 20 snoozes, that's, th these are the people that I need to be talking to right now. We need to go back and look at step zero and look at what happens when you set your alarm. Right? When you are selecting that time, you are making that contract with yourself, right? And so... You gotta, you gotta listen to what you're. This, I don't know. You can't see it really well. This is my amazing rendition of an alarm clock going off up to here. So, uh, but the 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 point is this: that if you want to start your day with with the right kind of success, with the right kind of vigor, with that with the right kind of attitude, so much of it is empowered from the decisions that we make and the actions that back those up. And so if we're backing our actions up, if we're backing our, our purpose, our thoughts, and, and the person that we want to be up with those actions, we're going to have so much more momentum going into the day. You're, if you wake up when your alarm goes off, there's a type of motivation that comes with that because it's, it's like you won. And so you've conquered that first step because you know it's not easy. We acknowledge that like waking up when that alarm goes off isn't easy. That's why we're having this whole conversation now. And so you're already getting not just like, oh, this tiny little minor, minor victory. You're getting a substantial, a substantive win in the day. And it's, and it's not to be, and I'm not just talking this up. Uh, it, it is, it will carry with it momentum going into the next step. Like you're actually, if you're up and you get up when that, when that alarm goes off, you're out of bed and you're moving, you, you are, the, the actions that you take are inherently going to be, uh, more progressive. They're, they're naturally going to be more substantive in their approach because you don't want to be getting up. You don't want to be following through and having discipline for the sake of getting up and, and screwing off. Right. So, so you are inherently going to be motivated to get things done. And now here's the thing. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Like your process can kind of still be the same, but if you're getting up when your alarm goes off, you've already bought yourself, depending on how you're, depending on how you have your snooze set up. Uh, if you're snoozing two, three times a day and these snoozers are 10 minutes a piece, you've just added 20, 30 minutes to your day. And so if you go downstairs and, and you get the coffee brewing and everything, that is, that's huge. Like we've, we've already added time to your day. And not only have we added time to your day, but we've added prob some of the most uh, useful and productive time of your day because this is, it's fresh and, and it's undisturbed. One of the things that I actually chose to do personally with this step when I was enacting this and I was I was taking positive control of my of my life starting with my mornings, I decided to wake up earlier. So I'd set my alarm. Now I wake up every day, my alarm goes off 
uh, I actually use uh, another tool that might be helpful or um, at least interesting for you guys. Um, I believe it's an app that's called Sleep Cycle. And in Sleep Cycle, you have different settings. You can have it just an alarm that goes off. You can have an alarm that goes off based on and within a certain time frame, or you can have no alarm go off. And that last one might sound weird, but you have to understand the purpose of the app. The purpose of the app is to track and monitor how you're going up and down through the different sleep cycles. And without getting too far into like the science and everything of it, it's actually important that you cycle up and down through the sleep cycles. You don't want to drop, hit deep sleep, ride deep sleep for like four hours and then come out you're actually wanting your to get the best most restful sleep you need to be going up and down through the different stages of sleep throughout the evening and the sleep cycle will help uh to identify that in its process and in, in your progress and, and how you're actually doing and going through those things uh what's especially cool is that if you set it for a time period, so for me, I set my alarm between 4.30 and 5 a.m. And, and I'm not saying not saying that you need to do this. This is not, you know, everyone is the is the captain of their own ship and the, the, the master of their destiny. You know, so set your alarm at a time that makes sense for you. But for me, I love having the morning. I love having the period from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. where it's just, it's whatever I want it to be. In my head, I was like, that's when I'm most creative. And that's true some days. Some days it's not. Some days I'm not creative at all. Some days it, it turns into a, a more of a reading and reflection time. Um, I'll focus really heavily on on gratitude. I'll focus really heavy on, on gaining insight on a, a piece of stoicism. I will try to learn something new. But this time, this period, it's mine to do with what I want. I take back control of it. I have the ability to do that. That works with my schedule. I enable that by setting by using this app, which selects a time. It, it identifies where I'm at in the sleep cycle, and it will wake me up within that time period when I'm at my lightest period of sleep. So it's not jolting me up from a deep sleep where you're groggy and, and, and you're all befuddled and, and you you know those mornings it's you know we talk about being close to your spark and how like you get out of bed and you're just firing on all cylinders that's actually like linked into this here it is it's part of what enables that to happen is when you're getting up in conjunction with that that right uh that right cycle of sleep the correct cycle of sleep and so this is just it's and it's a free app totally free um, and so you can, you can do that as another tool that you can have in your toolbox in order to, uh, to facilitate those, those great mornings for you, the great lift off from bed. Uh, and so that, that's just another way, but that's it. That's step one is wake up. All right. Now we're on to step two, which is don't look at emails. As a matter of fact, don't look at any of these Right? Don't look at your emails, don't look at text messages, don't look at the news breaks. Uh, we can just, if we, if for the first part of our day, if you know <laughs> what this symbol is, I'm sorry, I feel your pain. <laughs> but but we, uh, we, we, we aren't going to lose them, right? They're not going anywhere. So let us say that for the first part of our day, we're just gonna get rid of these, right? We're just gonna say, get out of here. We're not interested. You're still gonna be there later, but for now, I don't need you. I don't care. I promise that they will still be there when you're at work. If if there was a meeting that changed times and, and you were expected to be there, but you haven't sent a confirmation, then then you have not confirmed that you can make this time, right? Like create the expectation with people at work or with people in your life that if people want to create last minute changes, they actually need to call you to confirm that this works with your schedule. Create a meeting with yourself that that is that locks in this personal time and reflects it just as busy. Like you're busy in the morning. Sorry, I can't, I, I'm not able to be contacted. Do not scroll through social media. Do not turn on the news. Don't turn on, don't even turn on your favorite podcast. Yes, 
That includes mine. I'm more than happy to tell you not to listen to my show first thing in the morning. This is how important I believe that this is. And you're not going to take control of the mental state of yourself and get close to that spark like we talked about if you're going into receive mode first thing right away. Embrace silence, especially if you're accustomed to that steady stream of stimulus. This is crucial. This is really how you take control of of your mornings. You you do not allow them to be usurped by other other forces. Because that's the thing is if if you're not driving the car of your life like someone's going to if you're not grabbing the wheel someone else is going to everyone has competing interests for your attention and they want it from the very first thing that's the reason if you've watched things like the social dilemma they they articulate very clearly how the dings and the notifications and all of these things were specifically designed with the psychology of you in mind with the psychology of, we know how to capture your attention. We know how to keep you engaged. Once we lose your engagement, we know how to bring it back in. This, it's all, it's all a game. It's all a game for your attention. So don't, don't waste the discipline that you enacted with getting up with your alarm, right? Don't, don't lose that by turning over the control of your, your morning to another source. I'm not saying to avoid it altogether and, and to never listen to anything again, but but take control of at least a certain period of time where where it's just you. You're just reflective. It can be you go wow. It could just be the time that it takes you to throw your you know robe on or go downstairs in your pajamas or your sweats or whatever, and you brew that first cup of coffee or you make that cup of tea or whatever. You drink kombucha, <laughs> whatever your jam is doesn't really matter, but. Once you get, like, allow yourself that time to get downstairs, prepare something nice for you that is just for you, that is just for you, and and enjoy it and think about why you're enjoying it. And that's going to lead us right into step three. And we're moving right along. Step three, practicing gratitude. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to go find a special journal and have a special pen and sit down in your special chair for an hour to think about all the special things that you should be grateful for. No, while emphasizing this activity can be useful and beneficial, I think that you're actually best served by doing this while something else is actually happening. Um, what, what would be called a stacking. Um, so I'd like you to stack this activity, and you can stack it however you'd like to. It can look however you want. My two personal favorite places to stack this in the mornings are while my coffee's brewing and while I'm in the shower. And the reasons that these work well for me is that even if I'm having a particularly poor morning where I just got out of bed on the wrong side and everything feels a little bit off kilter, that I could use the these external sources of activities, the shower and the coffee, to help create and generate feelings of gratitude and to really kind of undercut those negative emotions that, that can be sitting there that could be waiting for me in the morning. So in this worst case scenario, when you're pissed at your spouse for turning off your alarm and you slept in, and then when you got up, you stepped on your kid's Legos for like the 10,000th time, and everything else just seems to be falling apart around you, you can still smell that coffee, that beautiful aroma coming from your coffee machine. And you can take that half second to think about what it took to get that coffee there. There was a farmer somewhere in the world, think Colombia countries hunt thousands of miles away and this farmer had to sit down and and cultivate this crop he had to check the nutrient levels in the soil he had to check the beans to make sure that they were good enough quality then he had to bag the beans he had to get the bags on trucks the trucks had to get to ships the ships had to sh sail across the ocean they had to get on planes and fly over the top of mountains all of this to deliver beans to your local grocery store. In order for them to get to your grocery store, they had to be taken off of a plane. People had to offload them from a ship. They had to take these bags and put them onto more trucks. These trucks only run because somebody developed the combustion engine, 
where we take gasoline, we spray it inside of a metal box and we make it explode. And that explosion propels a truck forward. All to haul our beautiful, amazing caffeine beans. Right? And so all of this to say is that by, by the time that you're done considering the pro, it's just a simple process for how a coffee bean ends up at your counter in your coffee machine being brewed in front of you. When you take the time to, to be thankful for all of the people that it took for this process to happen, for, for you to be able to enjoy your morning cup of coffee. By the time you, you process, you fully process a single part of that action. You, your, your gratitude, your, the way that you're feeling and, and those thoughts about the negativity, they, they will have, well, they may not have disappeared, they will have subsided. Because here's the thing about the way that our minds work. Here's a little lesson. We cannot, in our brains, we cannot hold these two thoughts, these two emotions at the same time. We cannot hold gratitude and anxiety. We cannot hold on to, we cannot perceive gratitude and anger, gratitude and disgust, gratitude and frustration. We cannot feel these at the same time. The effects of gratitude are so insanely profound that I actually went on and 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 went did a deep dive into this specific realm of of emotional experience and how it impacts us it, the the levels of it the understanding of it, they get so deep and in in the impacts are so tremendous that I built an entire video series just on gratitude that's how powerful this is now you don't need to go and listen to this entire video series to leverage gratitude to your great benefit that's that's the amazing thing about gratitude you don't need to be a scientist you don't need to to be a monk that's dedicated the last 20 years of his life to grateful thoughts honing the the inner workings of his mind so that he can really be grateful and and extract all of the great benefits that come from that you don't need to do any of that you can do it right now you could pause this video right now and you could do exactly what i just said you could do that with the process of how thinking about how we got to the point that you can sit there and watch this video on your device on your phone on your computer on your tablet anywhere in the world that you have an internet connection and and think about all of the processes that it took to get there all the way starting back to benjamin franklin having flying a kite on a stormy day all the way to today when i'm recording a, a video in my studio and you're watching it in on the beaches of bali or in downtown new york or in the cornfields out in Nebraska, my good old hometown. But this is this is this is part of the process. This is how you can leverage it, and it doesn't require, like I said, it doesn't require some big robust setup for you to really get the most out of being grateful. It just it takes a a, a what and a why. What is something that you can be grateful for? And, and when you wake up in the morning, you're surrounded by it. You know, I, like I said, I like to do it in the shower because then I can think about the warm water that's rushing over me and the fact that like, oh, I can adjust that because it's a little too warm. Let me let me let me bump up the the knob on the on the cold water. Oh, now it's a little bit too cold. Let me adjust that back. And then I get out of the shower. I'm like, oh, it's a little cold. Let me let me turn the heat on. Uh, oh, I have a heater in here specifically just for when I get out of the shower because you know, don't want to be too uncomfortable. So that's there are. There are a million different ways within the morning that you can you can practice gratitude. And, and as you practice it and as you do it more and more, you'll find that you can be more and more grateful. And this is the crazy part. When you practice this gratitude, the same way that we talked about earlier, when, when you're at work and you're having interactions with those people that you work with and, 
and they are the way that they are and the way that their attitude is and the way that they they interact with you is affecting your emotions and your thoughts and then those thoughts and emotions drive your actions and you take those actions home with you and then your family experiences those you are at the whim if you are doing this which most of us do you are at the whims of the world when it comes to your emotional state, right? Gratitude gives you a weapon to fight against that. It actually gives you the ability to change the way that interactions are happening at work. If you go to work with a sense of gratitude, with a sense of, I, I can be grateful. Like, if I was thinking about the things that I'm grateful for, and I'm thinking about, oh, wow, what did it take to create this creature comfort that I have, um, and my mind is starting to change. It's starting to, to acknowledge a different type of reality. It's starting to acknowledge the, the process and the work that was required from, from men and women for generations and uh, leading up to me, all to have what we have now. And that energy can and will translate to you at work. It will translate to the way that you interact with people. When you see people doing their jobs and performing their functions and, and even though it's not something that you do and it's not your responsibility and so because it's not your responsibility, you typically like, okay, well, Johnny's going to get that done and, and Susie's going to take care of that. You can actually think about what it is that they need to do and be like, wow, I don't know what it is that you need to do. You know, maybe, maybe I'll ask you, you know, maybe I'll ask them. And, and give them that time of day and, and treat them like a person and treat them like someone that I'm really interested in learning from. And, and, and if nothing else, if I don't even want to know about it, I can go to them and I could say, hey, I really appreciate the fact that you do this. Like, I have no idea how you run that program or how that software works, but it really does make this part of our organization's mission go much more smoothly like i can't imagine what we would do if we didn't have that report that is that's incredible it's a great insight and and i actually use it all the time and so that's great or i don't maybe i don't even use it but i know that these guys over here use it and i hear them talking about it and so that's it's just fantastic i just i appreciate it that little thing that that changes that person's thought process that 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 shifts them from that scenario that picture i painted for you in the beginning where where you go to work and everyone's head's buried in their computer. And, and when you go up to that person whose head is buried in their computer and, and nobody wants to talk because everyone's still shaking off the rust and the cobwebs from the night before, uh, this it, it changes it to them feeling valued as a person, as a member of the team. And that's something that you can do. That's something that you can provide. And it can really... It can really change lives. It can change the world. Not to get not to get too idealistic, but but I am. I, I am idealistic and I do believe that we can change the world because changing the world happens at the individual level because the world is made up of individuals. But it's made up of individuals who who collaborate together. We are social beings and it is hard for us to define our purpose without considering the world in which we live and the, and the society in which we live. And so if we, if we acknowledge that change in the culture stems from change on an individual level, when we change as individuals, when we choose a harder path because it's better, when we choose to go out of our way to let somebody know that they're valued, and that we're grateful for the work that they've done. That impacts the way that they perceive their workplace. That That is you flipping the script. And it is you changing it and influencing their mood and their emotions and their subsequent actions. And they bring that home with them to their families. Now imagine the difference that the family feels when this person comes home and, and they feel valued at work and and they're 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 motivated, they know that they're they're seen as a person. You can do that through one comment, through one statement a day, 
going up to a different person and just and and people start to recognize you and and, and when you come in people see that that you bring with you this light and i don't know if that gets you closer to your spark but it sure as hell gets me closer to mine i hope that this has provided some sort of value to you if it has then then join us come come check out the the other things we have going on you know and it's not a sales funnel not not anything to get you uh to to buy from me and stuff like yeah sure i'm gonna have training programs for sale and all that but but i want to make a difference in in the world and i want to do that by changing my life and when i change my life and i do these things i'm hoping that it has an impact on you where it positively impacts you even if it's in one small way and then that small impact can can work its way out so thank you Thank you so very much for, for being here. I hope that you really give this a shot. If, if you can implement this new morning, your new morning, for the next 21 days, 21 days, that's all I'm asking. It doesn't matter. Now, we call it your new morning, but that's, it's really, it's your start, right? If you work at nights and, and your morning your beginning of your day starts in the afternoon, then it starts then. This is the whole point of this that it's flexible. It's not it's not rigid. You can you can shift it and you can mold it and you can rearrange it in a way that that fits your life. But the, the key here is that you take the, the principles from it and and you live a little bit more disciplined and you follow through on your word. And you don't get usurped by everyone else that's trying to get your attention. You give yourself that attention. And you, you in that attention, you focus a little bit on, on something that you're grateful for. And then you find a way to pay that forward. And that's, that's, that's the formula. That's it. That is the formula. So, give it a shot. 21 days. That's the challenge. And the key behind 21 days is that's how long it takes to form a habit. So even after that, even if things start to wibble and wobble and, and maybe you don't hit it every single day the way that you used to, then you still have a framework now to fall back on. Be flexible in your implementation, but be rigid in your consistency and, and the fact that you're going to do this every day for 21 days. That's it. If after 21 days, you don't see a benefit and you don't feel better, you don't feel like you're on a, you're on a track to a better place than you are right now, I appreciate your time and uh, I, can't offer you anything back i can't offer you your time back and but i'm i'm confident that you are going to walk away at least a smidge nay uh a smidge more content more satisfied more fulfilled that's the goal happiness is fleeting contentment fulfillment seeking purpose that provides us that long lasting feeling of accomplishment of 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 fulfillment by pursuing the purpose so let's do that thank you guys so much i'll see you on 